Welcome everyone, I'm Rowan Crockett, Grower Services Manager for our Northern Region, and I'll be your host for this webinar, which is being held in place of physical grower meetings for our Weemala, Garah, North Star, Cropper Creek, Binagai, Gurley and Moree sites. 2020 has certainly already been a big year for everyone. And while a lot of things haven't gone to plan this year, one positive has been the return of some decent rainfall to our region. As a result, we find ourselves on the doorstep of what looks like being the best harvest for a number of seasons. While it's an exciting time for the industry, there's also a lot riding on this crop and we're not underestimating the importance of getting it off and into the bin to generate some badly needed cash flows for rural communities. This evening, you will hear updates on a variety of topics around delivering safely to your grain corp site this harvest. No doubt, some of the topics discussed will lead to further questions and you've probably noticed by now this session is equipped with a chat feature on the right hand side of your screen. Are you more than welcome to, to pop questions in there at, at any stage? We have left some time open at the end of the webinar to, to answer any questions that, that are not covered off by the presenters. Um, if, if we don't get to your questions on, on this session or at the end, then uh, you can certainly expect a, a call from someone uh, to discuss your query following this, this uh, session. Uh, given it's a busy time of year, I'll aim to wrap up in under an hour, so please understand we may not be able to, to drill down into too much site-specific detail around operations, etc. but we'll, we'll do our best to cover most topics, and, and if there are any follow-up questions, please, please do contact someone to, to chase them up before harvest. Um, to kick off our presentations this afternoon, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Klaus Paminger, our Chief Operating Officer, to say a few words. Good afternoon, Klaus. Welcome and, and over to you. Good afternoon, Rowan, and welcome to the Grow webinar, the Grain Cup Grow webinar, and thank you all for dialing in. I know we're all looking forward to a much better outlook, successful harvest after a number of challenging and difficult years. And I know I've been up in Mori only recently that the crops look much better and you have received some rainfall last weekend, so hopefully things keep moving in the right direction. We are excited, and I'm sure you are excited, and we'll be busy um, coming up to this harvest, you as the growers, the local community, and Grain Corp. You will hear from the team update to ensure that we have a safe and efficient harvest for all concerned. Early in the year, Grain Corp demerged its malt business, which is now separately listed on the Australian Stock Exchange, but the outcome of that is Grain Corp's grain and oil business, the Grain Corp that you know today, is in very strong financial position with zero debt on its balance sheet, which is really important. As we're preparing for harvest for some months now, we've been moving equipment from the south where it was last deployed last harvest to the north to make sure we've got equipment in place on time when harvest commences. We've acquired more stackers and more drive over hoppers and have sufficient tarps to, co to cover the crop. We have opened for 3,000 positions, 3,000 casuals to cater for the harvest. I'm happy to share with you we have had more than 5,500 applicants to fill those positions and I think we're in a very good space to make sure we have the right people in place on time. Well, I mentioned earlier, 2020 has been a challenging year regarding COVID, and we, Grain Corp, have prepared to make sure um, we have a COVID-safe harvest. So you, our customer, us, our staff, are safe during the harvest process. There will be some changes in the delivery process to make sure we keep social distancing and customers and staff safe. We've invested in the last few years heavily on our digital platforms, such as Fastway, Crop Connect, and Coptimizer, to make sure we can be efficient. And just in times like COVID-19, those investments and digital platforms are really important to service you. We will continue to pay our customers, you, on a two-day payment term. On behalf of Grain Corp, I wish you a safe and prosperous harvest. To, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask questions. And thank you for joining us today. 
Thanks, class. Appreciate your time and, and look forward to, to seeing you up in the, the region sometime soon. Thank you. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, 2020 has certainly been a year of surprises, and I'm certain most would agree COVID-19 has been the biggest of them all. At Graincorp, we're certainly taking the COVID situation very seriously, and I'd now like to welcome our next guest, Luke Vanderworth, Regional Operations Manager for Northern New South Wales, to share with us his team's plan to ensure our customers and staff remain safe this harvest and our sites remain open for deliveries. Welcome, Luke. Over to you. Thanks, Rowan. Uh, welcome all. Thank you for taking time out this afternoon to jump on the webinar. Um, as Klaus discussed, um, COVID-19 has changed the way we've operated, um, going to have to operate. Um, as you all will be aware that um, we've had a reverse supply chain this year and we've had a, a pretty extensive um, road movement and rail program through COVID. Um, so we've been operating in that space already and had to change the way we operate and interact with customers at our sites. Um, it's worked quite successfully um, and now we, we roll into our harvest period where we've had to put in some changes again to ensure the supply chain doesn't fail during harvest um, and that we can protect our employees and also visitors to the site. So there's a, significant, a few minor changes. It's not really that big. Um, guys have been delivering for a long time. It will be, might be a little bit challenging, but, yeah, we're putting these procedures in place again just to ensure the supply chain operates quite well at harvest time. Um, one of the biggest ones, um, which I'll probably touch base on in a bit more detail, is that during this harvest, we won't be allowing any visitors or growers access into the Waybridge or sample stand. And I'll delve into that in a bit more detail as we go through it, how we're going to manage that and how you can still operate and re receive grain into our sites. Um, so the first change we do have in place is um, contract tracing. So we need to, under legislation, we need to record everyone that attends the site. So we'll be implementing the QR scanning system. So every site has its own individual QR code. Um, when you come into the site, you need to just take a picture of the QR code. Um, it will download. Um, you need to populate your information. And then every time after that, when you deliver, um, you just need to scan that code, um, show that you've uh, attended the site, and um, go from there. There will be a manual system for people that don't have phones or smartphones, but we are encouraging everyone to, to use the, the QR system. Um, the next change is uh, the use of updated delivery advice forms. So um, they've been around for a long time. Um, we've really ramped that up, but every delivery this year um, into the site will be required to have a grain core um, delivery advice form um, with every load. Um, that will be pre-populated. You can get it in a Word doc form. We've got book booklet forms. We will have paper-based copies on site for everyone to fill out. Um, we're encouraging everyone to pre-populate as much as they can um, beforehand because this will also speed the receival process up. Um, grower samples. So when you come in to get your moisture tested before harvest, <clears throat> we're asking everyone that they um, turn up to the site with the grower delivery advice summary pre-populated, filled out with their details, um, and that they have their um, sample in a Ziploc bag um, that is handed into the uh, sample stand. Uh, the team at the site will take that off you. Um, you can leave or, or wait outside and down the stairs away from, keep, keep your 1.5, and then they will call you and update you with your um, results from there. The next change as we go through the process is as you go onto the Waybridge, um, we've, the option to cash or um, transfer to contract has been removed. Um, Again, this is just to stop that interaction and the time spent at the, the Waybridge with the Waybridge clerk and the truck driver. Um, you can use Crop Connect to transfer um, your grain into a contract or to uh, cash price um, within 10 minutes. It'll be in the system. Um, or you can call the grower hotline and, and that team's based out of Tamworth um, and they're there to, to help you transfer your grain. The last change is that um, for the note, that there'll be no transfer of a clipboard around the site. So as the truck driver leaves the Waybridge, heads to the hopper, um, we've changed the delivery um, slip that you will see that um, storage location is in, in bold and also the grade. You'll just visually uh, pull that up and, and the hopper attendant will look at that and he will make sure it's the right grade, right location, and then the, grow, uh, the truck driver or grower will then unload his load and proceed back to the, the tear-off bridge um, from there. So, Ron, that's a bit of the, the COVID update. And, yeah, thanks and welcome for any questions, Ron. Thank you. Um, look, I, yeah, it all sounds pretty practical to me, but but probably the obvious question I would throw to you is is what do you think, what impact do you think it will have on, on turnaround times for trucks? 
Uh, from the sample stand to Weybridge, we regularly see that the truck driver has the wrong NGR, doesn't know his truck code, um, doesn't have the right information, and, and it slows that whole process down. Um, with this being pre-populated, that'll speed that up. Um, our delivery advice forms follow the way we, we enter the data into our system, so that'll flow a lot quicker. Um, and then also when we get to the Weybridge, we do find that what, what's the best cash price, what's the contract number, that's all regularly wrong and that slows down that and chokes the system up. So I think, if anything, we should see a, a, a bit of a speed up from the, the sample stand through to the Weybridge. Very good. Might be a, a little bit of an, an unintended win there, which is, is pleasing to hear. Uh, look, I have got a couple of other questions for you and, and I, I will sort of lead in with with highlighting that, that I'm prob these probably come from questions I've had directed to me from, from growers on, on my travels around and, and um, feel that there was probably a few myths or, or, uh, or different versions of, of what we may or may not be doing out there. So, look, you've, you've probably touched on a couple of these in your, your previous answers, but I'll, I'll fire them away anyway just to, to clear up for everyone. Um, the first one was was that drivers wouldn't be allowed out of their truck and therefore Grain Corp staff would be be unrolling tarps and, and cracking tailgates again this year. Is is that the case? No, it's not the case. It's it's still the same. The, the driver is in charge of his truck. Um, he rolls his tarp back. Um, he opens his tailgate. All, all we're trying to do is just minimise the, the, the time spent at the windows, uh, maintain social distancing at our sample stand. So that's nothing will change in that area. Great, thank you. Look, the, the next one was was uh, some some stories going around that, that Grain Corp won't be doing any grower samples this year that or, or would be charging for grower samples. Is that the case? No, um, still exactly the same, except for you. We just need a Ziploc bag um, with the uh, grow delivery advice form with all the detail, a nice clean Ziploc bag. Um, again, regularly we see the old rum turn up that's come from the contractor, the truck driver. We just need to um, practice hygiene um, as we go through the process. So you still bring it up, drop it off. But again, traditionally, we would all congregate around the top of the sample stem waiting for them results. We're just asking that you, you leave the site and, and we'll contact you as soon as possible with the detail. Uh, next one was that that there was concern uh, from some carriers that they wouldn't be receiving a, a paper docket when they leave site this year. So trucks wouldn't have a record for or a copy for their records. Is is that the case? Still got yeah, yeah, one copy is printed off like usual. Um, if you're required to, you just need to let the Waybridge attendant know and they'll do a reprint and print the two off. But again, we're trying to minimise transfer of paper between uh, truck driver and, and our operators. So again, yeah, definitely be one piece of paper for you guys to, to record of the transaction. Very good. Thank you. And, and look, the final one from me, Luke, is, is just... Uh, you've mentioned every load needs to have a delivery advice. Uh, what what will happen if if a, if a truck turns up without one? Will you be sending them home? No, we won't. We'll have paper versions available at site. We just ask that, again, to ensure that it's a, a, a fast process, that that driver just pulls off to the side, um, come to the way visual, the sample stand. We'll have pre-populated. Uh, we won't have, not pre-populated, so we'll have plenty of blank copies there for them to fill out um, and then proceed onto the sample stand to, to start the receivable process. Great. Thanks, Luke. Appreciate your time today and, and sounds like there's, there's been a lot of work going on in the, the planning. Hopefully it all uh, all pays off in, in the next couple of months. Thank you. Uh, our, our next guest this evening will, will be a, a familiar face to, to most on the call, I think. Uh, Mick Grant, our Area Manager for Moree Region. Afternoon, Mick. Welcome and, and thanks for joining us. Thanks, Rowan. Uh, yeah, very exciting times and uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here and um, I'd like to welcome all our guests as well. Um, thanks for dialing in. Very good, Mick. I guess to, to kick off, I understand it's been a pretty busy couple of months for, for you and your team. Can you um, just give us a feel for, for what you've been up to in the region? Yes, Rowan. We've, um, yeah, we've had, yeah, it's been very busy uh, preparing sites. Um, we're going to have uh, seven operational sites open uh, throughout uh, my cluster. So uh, as you can imagine, um, we started off with two site managers. So uh, we've been busy developing a team uh, so we can service it, uh, service our growers and, and provide a good service. 
Great. Um, and, well, you, you mentioned your team there, Mick. Can you just give us a run through sort of who's who's who at each site this year? Yep. So, we'll, um, yeah, we, we've uh, got a, a reasonably new team. Um, uh, we've been spending a lot of time with each other, um, very customer focused, um, which is uh, so we can over service. Um, you know, we know how important uh, this harvest is for everyone. So, uh, we're excited and looking forward to it. So, I'll start off in the north. Um, up at North Star, we have Jeffrey Phillips. Um, and then as we move down to Cropper Creek, I have Graham Sabine there. Um, and then as we head out to Binigai, uh, Sean Mills. Um, and then uh, in Moree, we have Adam Phillips, uh, Peter Davison at Gurley. And then as we head out the western line, we have David Tape at Gra and Hayden Quinn at uh, Weemala. Thanks, Mick. Sounds like you've uh, yeah got got the team in place, which is good. I guess those those core core guys are going to need a fair bit of support though through the harvest time. Um, how have you gone with with recruiting casuals? There was a bit of bit of concern earlier in the year that that COVID might have made that a a bigger task than normal. Yeah, it was, Rowan. Uh, very difficult at the start um, with uh, border restrictions. Um, uh, and then COVID bubbles um, and whatnot. But, um, you know, we've, yeah, we've been very busy recruiting guys and onboarding them, and um, we think that we have got a good good team in place. Um, uh, and, you know, we're, we're sort of no different to everyone else, um, um, you know, trying to onboard people and, and get, get, get feet on the ground. But uh, we believe, we've, um, yeah, we've, we've been busy sort of onboarding and, and training these guys, so we believe that we will have it a good good team and a good support team for those managers that are just named. Great. Fantastic to hear um, and, and I'm sure a big relief to, to you and, and the team. Um, Mick, the next question I was going to put to you was was just around what, what segs you're taking where and, and also what hours you'll be operating at each site, if you can, can do a bit of a run through there. Yep. No idea. We'll start in the north again, Ron, so North Star, uh, North Star We'll take our barley segs and our wheat segs. Uh, it'll just be the, the one shift there. Um, but uh, um, obviously we're working with the grower and extended hours um, if need be. Um, same with Cropper Creek. Um, it'll be just the one shift but extended hours if need be. Um, and at a, Cropper Creek it'll be a barley seg and a wheat seg. Um, as we head out to Binigai, um, we've got our malt seg at, of Commander at Binigai. Um, and also a barley seg for feed. Um, as we head into Moree, Moree's most commodities again. Um, yeah, we always have plenty of commodities at Moree, which is good. So uh, we'll start off with canola. Uh, we'll have a barley seg. Uh, we'll also have wheat segs, uh, durum seg, and a chickpea seg as well. Um, as we head out to Gurley, Gurley, um, just the barley seg, the feed barley seg, and also wheat segs. Um, Gara, uh, 2016 with Gara, we offered a, a barley seg of feed. Uh, it was quite successful. Um, so we'll, that um, option will be there again this year. So we'll have a barley seg and we'll have the wheat seg as well. Um, out at Weemala, we'll just have the, the wheat wheat seg out at Weemala. Um, yeah, and then, yeah, obviously, obviously more air will be 24 hours. Uh, we'll have a split shift at, at Gra so we can go through um, extended hours. Uh, also at Gurley as well, there'll be extended hours at Gurley as well. So with that split shift in 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 place. So um, yeah, we yeah it's we're very excited and uh, yeah we've got got guys in place and we're yeah very customer focused this year and we know how important this is for for our region, our area, and our community. So. Very good, thanks, Mick. Look, only a couple of. Uh, more from me. Uh, the first one I was going to ask you, the, the harvest management scheme. Now, I understand there's a few changes with, with how Grain Corp's interacting with that this year. Can you just give us a little bit of an update on, on the differences there? Yeah, Rowan, so we, yeah, we don't have the donation bin anymore. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, so pretty much now you turn up on the way bridge if the vehicle, if the truck is overloaded, uh, we will still tip that overloaded truck off. Um, but in saying that, it's not a free for all. Um, RMS, they do have, um, you know, they do have, they can 
access our files, our information. So uh, if that truck is overloaded and it's within our system, the RMS um, can see that as well. So uh, just a, a warning to all the growers and, and truck drivers um, to try and stick to the uh, regular limits. Um, but once that, if that truck, when we do accept that truck that's overloaded, a, um, a text message will be sent to the grower by the NGR number, uh, by Crop, Crop Connect, sorry, and then also uh, an email will be sent to the NGR number as well. So um, notifying the grower that that truck is overloaded. Great. Thanks, Mick. Um, look, the, the one final one from me, and, and uh, I think it's the key to, to a, any successful harvest is, is communication um, and, and two-way communication. So can, can you just give us a bit of a feel for for what info your your team will be looking for from growers, both both in the leading and, and during harvest and, and probably how you'll be communicating important updates throughout the harvest as well? Yeah, communication is the key, Rowan. Um, you know, the more information that my site guys can get or the more information that I can get off the grower, the better. Uh, we understand that, uh, you know, some growers don't, don't like to give out all the information, but... Um, if, if we've got a, an idea of you know, how many headers you got going, how many trucks you got going, and you know, then then we can service you guys. Uh, you know, if we know what's coming at us, then uh, we can prepare. Um, and then, you know, so the more communication that, and the more we're talking, uh, the the better we can over service, over service the growers, um, and get those trucks tipped off and get them back out out to the paddocks. Um, you know, a text service, uh, a text message service will also be in, in play. Um, all sites are, are on Channel 3 as well, UHF Channel 3. So, you know, there's plenty of ways to contact. Um, on the invitation for the webinar, all, all my uh, site manager's details are on the invitation uh, for all phone numbers. So, you know, if, if you can't get hold of them, then um, by all means give me a call. So the more communication, the better. Great. Thanks, Mick, and appreciate your time this afternoon. Good, good luck to you and the team. I, I, yeah, sure it'll be a, a, a busy but, uh, but rewarding couple of months. Thanks, Sean. Uh, our, our next uh, presenter this, this evening is uh, Tom Grant, who's a grain marketer that looks after the, the Moray and Gundawindi regions. Uh, welcome, Tom. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Rowan. Evening, everyone. It's great to be here. Uh, Tom, I guess I was going to start with uh, it's been a while since since a lot of uh, growers have delivered to Grain Corp. So um, just whether you had any any pointers or a bit of a checklist of things growers should try to, to cover off before the, the first load comes in just to make sure everything's run smoothly. Yeah, sure. So I think um, as with uh, things like these, after a bit of lapse time, um, some of the information um, that we have in, in various systems that we use um, certainly goes awry. So I think uh, now would be a pretty pertinent time to, to log in um, to, to the NGR system, um, make sure that the details um, in that database for your business are true, present, correct. Um, and it's also important to make sure that you've got anyone who will be um, acting on your behalf uh, uh, listed under your NGR account just to make sure that um, they have that um, authority to act. Um, similarly, with uh, Grain Corp's um, uh, stock management platform, uh, Crop Connect, um, same thing. If it's not something you've used in the past, it's worthwhile logging on, getting yourself set up with a, um, a uh, an account. And and similarly, just just making sure if you have if you have used it before, but not for a while, certainly worthwhile getting in there and, and just making sure all the details are are up to date. Um, it's probably also, I mean, mix, mix given, um, given you all a good rundown of some of the new staff um, throughout the business in the Moree cluster, certainly worthwhile just making sure you've got all your site contacts up to date. Um, so when we get into the heat of harvest, um, you've got uh, a ready contact there that um, you, can, you can get in touch with quickly. Um, and I think uh, just as a final one for this season, certainly with the, the grower delivery advice form, it's probably worth uh, just just before we get there, um, jumping online, going to the, the season update uh, website, Grain Corp season update, update website, and and printing off a stack of um, of the grower delivery advice form just so you've got them them ready to go uh, before things get busy in a couple of weeks' time. Great, 
Thanks, Tom. Some some really good tips there. Uh, look, Tom, there's there's probably a few changes that that we've made over the last couple of years, which we're hoping makes Graincorp a bit easier to to do business with. Can you just give us a bit of an insight into to those changes for for anyone who's not aware? Yeah. So I think first and foremost, um, since the last big season in the north. Um, the big one's been an additional month of free storage for all growers. So in the past, we've uh, we've issued the, the month of delivery plus an additional month of free storage. That's actually been extended to, to two months of free storage uh, plus the month of delivery now. So um, the only only fees that the grower um, will will be uh, liable for from Grain Corp are the storage um, monthly storage fee after that that uh, grace period um, expires. So, um, and a- as an additional kicker on top of that, we've actually changed the way that we invoice our storage fees to growers now as well. Um, so you actually won't see an invoice uh, for any storage fees until you transfer your grain uh, to a buyer. So um, just an added kicker, I guess, uh, on, a, on a cash flow front um, that we've been able to, to facilitate as well. Um, the second one I'd probably like to just highlight, actually Klaus mentioned it too, but just the, the two-day two, two day payment terms um, that growers will get when they're, when they're selling them to, their grain to Grain Corp as the buyer. Um, so just with, an, with some improvements in our systems, um, it allows us to get, get growers paid uh, faster than ever. So, yeah, just, just another really, um, really positive change that we've been able to enact to, to make things um, just a bit easier to do business with Grain Corp. Um, going forward. So, yeah, really exciting changes there. Great. Thanks, Tom. Uh, look, the, the other one you mentioned in, in, a little earlier was was Crop Connect. If I, I haven't logged into my account for a couple of years or, or indeed haven't used Crop Connect in, in the past, what, what should I look out for when I when I log into my Crop Connect account? Yeah, so Crop Connect's really developed into our, um, our key online stock management system for growers. Um, you can log in there and see all your, your grower delivery summaries by grade and by site. Um, you can also set, you can transfer your grain um, to all buyers. It's it's where all cash bids are found now. Um, so you can see, um, yeah, what what all, all buyers are, are, are bidding at the site. Um, you will actually also be able to access your, um, your invoices there as well, um, as well as, um, yeah, any, any pool, um, uh, if you if you're looking to, to transfer your grain to to uh, any of the pools, uh, you can do that through through Crop Connect as well. So just given the changes that Luke mentioned um, at the Waverage this year, uh, certainly worthwhile getting yourself if you're not already um, set up with a Crop Connect account um, so that you can uh, manage all that that uh, transfer uh, process after the fact of delivering your grain. Thanks, Tom. Look. While, while I'd certainly reiterate your comments and strongly encourage everyone to sign up, we, we do understand that the online platform isn't for everyone or, or at, at certain times there are a more complex queries that, that can't necessarily be, be handled online. Uh, what, what have we got in place for, for any of those, those sort of queries or, or anyone who doesn't want to use Crop Connect? Yeah, so we've still got our, our grower hotline, so 1800 Grains. Um, yeah, that puts you through to uh, the, the grower experience team. Uh, and that team's actually now based uh, in, in Tamworth, so a bit more of a regional touch than there has been in the past. You'll be talking to someone who's a little bit more local and probably has a bit more of an understanding of, of uh, how your business works and, and, and certainly where it's based. Um, so we've got an arm, army of people here in Tamworth ready to facilitate um, any queries you might have around, um, yeah, any of your stock management um, if, if you do want, if you would prefer to transfer your grain um, over the phone, that can be done there as well. Uh, and, and any other administrative queries you might have, um, certainly just, just keep that 1-800-GRAINS uh, number handy um, to give them a call. Great. Thanks, Tom. Look, the, the next one I was going to ask you on, and it's, it's not a new product, but, but maybe not all, all of our listeners will be familiar with Croptimizer. Um, can you just give us a a bit of a quick run through of, of what is Croptimizer and, and why it adds value for, for growers. Yeah, so yeah, Croptimizer is certainly something that we're we're very excited about. It, it's certainly been uh, a product that we've run for a number of years now. Um, but that, for those that aren't 
familiar. It's effectively a mechanism whereby we can upgrade um, delivered uh, loads um, up to up, up the grades effectively, so um, based on protein and, and screenings levels. Um, so there's effectively three three parameters that each load has to um, has to tick before um, that that upgrade can actually happen. So that um, first one is the the quality of the stack that the the, the load's going into um, needs to be of that higher grade. Um, second of all, what we call available grower quality equity. So you have to have delivered enough of that higher grade um, to average up the, the low the lower grade. And then finally, that individual uh, truckload has to be within tolerance um, to, to tick the final box to be to allow it to be upgraded. So if um, those three green lights are hit, um, that allows uh, us to enact a, a crop optimizer. So the process this year will be that um, if there is an available load in your NGR account uh, to be crop optimized, you'll actually receive a text message, um, and then that will prompt um, a call if you if you would like to. To uh, facilitate that crop that crop optimized load, um, give the one eight hundred grains number a uh, call again, and they can uh, they can facilitate that that upgrade for you. So, yeah, just another way that we can offer a bit, bit more um, bit more value back to the grower. Great, thanks, Tom. And, and look, maybe a little bit of a an added bonus with with all loads defaulting to warehouse this year is is the fact that you will get a chance to see whether those those loads are eligible for an upgrade be, before transferring them to cash. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, Tom, look, just one final one from me, and and that's that's around the markets and grain pricing. Um, have, have you got any on thoughts there on on how you see things playing out, and and I guess just give people a bit of an insight into who they, they should contact if they want to have a chat about the market or, or some info on pricing? Yeah, certainly. So um, if if anyone is interested to discuss um, any, or any, yeah, any functions in the market or you want to talk about our pricing, certainly happy for you to p pick up the phone and give me a call. Um, yeah, I can certainly help out. Uh, yeah, we, I, I'm really excited to say that this year we've been um, really competitive. Our, our customer and commercial team have been working really hard um, to make sure that they're supporting our local sites um, and we've, we've had really good uh, direct engagement with the growers so far. So hopefully that's something that can continue as we get into harvest um, and and certainly with a uh, with a bigger crop, we're, we're really excited to, um, yeah, to, just to see that that volume transacting this year. It's, it's a really refreshing change. Great. Thanks for your time tonight, Tom, and, and yeah, Good luck with the next couple of months. Uh, look, that, that's it for our, our presenters this evening. Um, we, we do have a few minutes left for questions. So, uh, yeah, I might, might kick off by, by asking a few from, from the audience. Uh, the first one I've got, I, I might throw to you, Luke, uh, if I can, and, and that's what happens if my, my local site fills or, or I guess to add to that, segregations fill. Oh, look, at the moment, probably the, the one positive of being a bit of lower volume for the last couple of years, all our sites are empty, um, ready to go, clean. Um, we've had a bit of an expansion out of grass, so um, trying to stop all that grain having to come to town. Um, we've expanded two bunkers out there, so there's another 60,000 tonner um, barley space out there, which also gives us a bit more space for wheat. Um, and as we come back into Moree, um, we've got plenty of... A rail lined up for this year. We'll target all sites across the network to make sure that put the rail in the right spot where required. So Moree being the good site we can load rail, we'll see trains there potentially every second day um, to ensure that we can make plenty of room. Great. Thanks, Luke. Uh, look, I, I might, while I've, while I've got you, Luke, uh, throw the next one to you as, as well. Um, and that's, can I use the same delivery advice multiple times out of out of one paddock if it's the same truck? Or will I will I need a separate piece of paper for each load? Yeah. We'll need a separate piece of paper for each load. So again, practicing hygiene practices, as you hand your slip up to the sample stand, um, as you uh, either do your grower sample or your delivery through the truck, that will be processed and that'll be thrown in the bin straight away you'll require an, another um, docket for each truck. Um, but again, if you jump onto the um, PDF version, you can pre-populate all the detail and print off as many copies as you like, um, so you have the, have the same delivery advice for every load. 
Very good. Thanks, Luke. Uh, look, the next one I've got, um, I might throw to Mick, um, and, and that's, uh, will, will singles be able to back into the stacks at, at Grain Corp sites this year? Uh, look, yeah, providing that, um, yeah, obviously if we, we'd like them to go over the stacker, um, but uh, look, if um, the line is getting getting quite long um, and we we, ha we are seeing delays, then we, we will pull some singles around and providing it's safe, uh, we'll back them in um, and then tip them off on the face. Very good. Thank you. Uh, and look, I have got one more here and, and I, I will just quickly before I, I ask him introduce Matt Simon, who's our, our quality assurance manager from, from Toowoomba, who's, who's jumped on. Uh, and, and this question is is relating to, to his area of expertise. Um, Matt, um, someone's noticed on the, the delivery advice that there's a question around um, declarations um, of glyphosate. Can, can you just give us a little bit more info on, on which commodities that affects and, and also why that is? Yeah, thanks, Rowan, and good afternoon, everyone. All chemical applications need to be declared at the sample stand, but in relation to glyphosate and barley, our samplers will ask the grower or their representative whether glyphosate has been applied to their crop as a desiccant. If glyphosate has been applied, then the maximum grade that this load can achieve is BAR1. If the load didn't have glyphosate applied, then it is eligible for a malting grade, obviously depending on the variety and the quality results. Also this year with Durham, we will be asking whether the Durham has been treated with glyphosate as well. And while there are MROLs in place for Durham, we do have some customer requirements for nil treated Durham for export. So we will also ask if it's been applied, we will take a load sample of each load of Durham. And that just really helps us to be able to target non-treated stock for our customer requirements. Great, thanks Matt, appreciate the, the update there. Um, Look, that, that's, uh, that's all our questions. So uh, that concludes our webinar for, for this afternoon. Um, look, if, if you do think of any follow-up questions, certainly encourage you to reach out to the appropriate people prior to harvest. Um, certainly easier to get those answers before, uh, before everyone goes, goes a little bit crazy for a few months. Um, we will be sending out a, a contact list of, of all the appropriate people for, for your region in the next couple of days, so please keep an eye on your email for that. Um, and, and as Tom alluded to before, please make sure you update the, the appropriate contacts in your phone because there has been a few changes there. Uh, look, that's, that's really it from me. I guess one final thing is just to say thanks very much for your attendance and, and wish everyone a safe and, and trouble-free harvest. Thank you.